the sidelines for a long time Now I'm finally kicking in the game at the US, America's favorite sports book and casino. Live betting and race book. We're celebrating 30 years with a historic offer. A 125% sign-up bonus on your first three deposits. Plus 10% gambler's insurance. Get started today. Bet US, where the game begins.
All right, can you hear me now? Yes or no in the chat? Testing, testing. Can you hear me now? All right, can you hear me now? Yes or no in the chat? Testing, testing. Can you hear me now? I don't know why this thing ain't working. 30 minutes trying to fix this. Right, oh, wait, wait, wait. Y'all can hear me? Testing, testing. Okay, can so you now? can hear me now. Okay, okay, cool, cool. All right, all right, we good? Man, my bad, y'all. I've been working on this for quite some time, man. I, I don't know what happened. I had some issues, some technical difficulties, but hopefully we're good now. Echo, you're hearing the echo. You are behind. You good. Let me know. Am I 100% good? Let me know in the chat now because I think I just fixed all the settings. But make sure, are we good now? Are we finally good? Okay? I think we should be good at this point. I hope so. All right. Now you're okay. Yes, no echo. All right, my bad, man. I don't know what happened. I've been working on this for the longest. And that's why I'm late. And... 30 minutes later, man. All right. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, man, listen, thank y'all so much for tuning in to TD Fans Talk, home of the real Miami Dolphin fans. We got to talk tonight. We're going to have a real good conversation because I want to break it all down. I want to get down to the nitty gritty. And we want to know where we are as a team tonight. Okay. We're going to have a real legitimate conversation we're not going to be fluffing around. We're going to have a real talk, all right? I'm also going to drop the link, open it up, you know, have a conversation with some of you guys. Um, um, but, yeah, we're going to get into it. But I want you all to keep in mind right now because we're going to start the show with the main topic, how many teams are better than the Miami Dolphins right now. Go ahead and put your number in the chat. How many teams do you think are better than the Miami Dolphins right now? Put your number in the chat, okay? Real real talk, real talk, all right? This ain't me trying to be negative and none of that mess. Just how many teams do you think are better than the Miami Dolphins right now, okay? And let's get some real answers. I see some people talk about 31. Come on, Greg. Let's, come on. Let's do this the right way. How many teams, okay? All right. At this very moment, again, when the season starts, you don't know. We could be the best team or the worst team. But at this very moment, based off of what we've done, what we know about this team, how many teams do you think are better than the Miami Dolphins? OK. All right. Let's go over what some of you guys have been saying. Let's see here. Man, this is crazy. Um, 11, 8. Three, 12, 12, 10, 3, 20, 12, 22, man, 29, 6, 10, a few, 12, 17, 10, 10, 7, 12, 10, 7, 20, 15, 15, 15, 8 to 10, 1. Okay. All right. So I'm just trying to get a gauge of everybody, okay? Um. All right. So here's the deal. How confident are you on a scale of 1 to 10 that we can win a Super Bowl this year? How confident are you that we could win a Super Bowl this year? Let me know in the chat. Ten men, we're going to win it. One, there ain't no chance. How confident are you that we're going to win a Super Bowl this year? Okay. Five, eight, zero. <laughs> One, five, three, negative ten. Y'all putting y'all doing y'all going so fast I can't even keep up. Seven zero three three. Is CD coming on? Um, what up, Alex? Mm. I ain't getting a lot of good numbers. 
Okay. Interesting. Again, y'all punch that like button on your way in the building. All right. I'm asking all this stuff for a reason. Okay. All right. Y'all can stop answering now. So it's monologue time. Give you my overall conversation tonight before we open it up and I answer questions and then I bring people on. So it's monologue time. If you send super chats, I'll hit them in the middle or at the, at the end of the monologue. Anybody who do send a super chat, appreciate you ahead of time. Um, but I want to talk to y'all. Okay. So I want to go back um, four years ago for the Miami Dolphins. Okay. Four years ago. Here's the reality. We decided that we were going to build a Super Bowl contender. Build this team up to the point to where we're competing for Super Bowls. Now, let me be clear to the audience. I think it's very important to understand what it means to build up to compete for a Super Bowl. When you have completed your build up to compete for the Super Bowl, what happens is at the beginning of the season, at least 80% of the fan base is like, we're going to win it all this year. Like, how can we not? That that like like and again that's my way of looking at it. Don't make me right. I could be totally wrong, but my way of looking at it is when eighty percent of the fan base looks at this roster and says we're about to win it all. Like, I really believe it, and here's why. Look at what we have. When's the last time as a Dolphin fan, you came into the regular season like, we're about to win it all because look at what we have. When is the last time you truly, truly deep down in your soul felt that way? I'm going to tell you when I felt that way. And it's so crazy when you look at today's roster. When I tell you when I felt that way, you're going to be like, oh, man, we were so worse than this team we have now. I felt <laughs> where the Dolphins know how to fool us. I felt that way when we got in Dominican Sue. Oh, we got in Dominican Sue, the most dominant defensive player ever. Like, I was like, we about to win a Super Bowl. We got in Dominican Sue. That was the last time I felt that way. And boy, I wasn't even close to being wrong. I was, I was like, I was just wrong. I was wrong. I was the definition of wrong, you know? Um, and I know a lot of people in the chat right now said last year, last year, last year, I didn't feel that way last year. The only reason I didn't feel that way last year is because I did a stream before the season started. Many of you all might remember that stream. Okay. Hold on. on that stream, remember I talked about there's too much hope on the roster? And I went through the whole roster and I came up with like 25 things that we were hopeful for. Like, I want y'all to go back with me last year and go off of hope, right? Like, let's backtrack last year, and I want to show y'all something. Last year, I said, I hope to will stay healthy all season. He did. Oh, matter of fact, this is funny. I want to do this quick exercise. I want to check boxes. Next time, I'm going to keep my list. But I had 25 hopes last year, right? I said, um... I hope that we um, Tua stays healthy. We did. He did. I said, oh, I hope Tua doesn't collapse in December and January. He collapsed. We didn't get that one. 
I said, I hope um, Bradley Chubb can play at an elite level. I don't know what to put that in. He got hurt. I said, I hope Jalen Phillips can get to that next level because he always almost get the guy. He did get to the next level, so you could check that off, but he got hurt. A lot of the things I hope for, even worse things happen that we didn't even put in the equation. I said, I hope Fangio can pick up where Brian Flores left off. He did. I said, I hope Xavier Howard can get back to form and not be in all those injuries. He didn't. He didn't. I said, I hope Ramsey can play well when he comes back from injury. But it took him longer than we thought. And then on top of it, I mean, not from injury, but I hope Ramsey acclimate to the system right away and play well. Technically, he did when he came back, right? I said, I hope the O-line can run block well. They did. I hope the O-line can pass block well. They did and didn't, but the way our scheme was, it didn't matter, right? Um, because we got the ball out quick. Long story short, right? A lot of the things that we hope for, I hope Connor Williams work out and not have as many penalties. He didn't, but he got hurt. I hope Teron Armstead could play more than 11 games. He didn't. So long story short, the point I'm trying to make here, the reason why I knew that we weren't really going to be competing for a Super Bowl is because when I came up with 25 hopes, the problem of the matter is I already told you, you need about 20 of them to work out just so that we can actually accomplish it. You, 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 five of them can fail, but you need about 20 of them not to fail. And here's the problem with last year. It was like 13 passed and 12 failed, but then we added on another 10 that we didn't even see coming. Like literally, out of the list of 25 things that we hope to happen for us to win a Super Bowl, if all those things happen, we're going to win one or at least to let 20 of them happen and we still could win one. Only 13 of them happened and 12 of them didn't, but then another 10 factors we didn't even think about happened. You see how dangerous, how slippery of a slope it is? You see how tough it is? TJ said, please don't make a list for 2024. I'm going to make a list, TJ. Because every year I like to revisit. This time I'm actually keep the list. But every year I want to revisit to see what ended up working out. But the moral of the story with that is, do you know how many things need to go right and how much fortune you need to have to actually win a Super Bowl? A lot of things need to go right. But the one thing you don't want to deal with is too much hope. You don't want to operate off of too much hope. And I'm going to tell you now, without doing it, I feel like when I do that exercise in training camp, like I do every year, we're probably going to come up with 35 this time. Because about 15 to 20 already are injury prone. We're probably going to come up with 35 this time. And the reality is, man, it's, it's just, it's not a confident type of situation to be in. It's just not. It's not the confident situation that you want to be in. That's just one aspect of it. But when I ask the question, how many teams are better than the Miami Dolphins right now? You all saw the answers in the chat, which makes you think. Why do you think those other teams are better than the Dolphins? So everybody who said any number of teams that's better than the Miami Dolphins, why? 
Why are those teams better than the Miami Dolphins? Break that down. Like, really, break that down. That's what needs to be broken down. Because here's the reality for the Dolphins. First of all, it is hard to win Super Bowls, ladies and gentlemen. And listen, y'all, I know everybody talk about quarterback and Tua. This ain't even about Tua tonight. I know we're going to get to Tua at some point because he's always a factor, but this ain't even about Tua tonight. This is talking about the real direction of the team and what direction they truly should be heading into. What direction should this team truly be heading towards? What's the smart thing to do to set us up the right way? Like, ain't nobody sitting here listening to these streams all the time that don't want to win a Super Bowl. There ain't nobody that's viewing me all the time, hoping we lose and that we don't have success. At least I hope so. You know, you never know. No, nah, let me lose some room for some crazy people. There's always some crazy people. So um, backtrack that just a little. But for the most part, there ain't like this overwhelming presence of people that's like, I want us to fail. I hope we fail every single year. It's not. We all want this team to win a Super Bowl, and we all keep trying to figure out why we aren't and what's been holding us back. Like, well, let me backtrack that as well for a little bit. Isn't that why we listen to content creators? Isn't that why we pick and choose who we want to listen to? Because we all want to get down to the bottom of why we're good or why we're not. It's like there's different levels of investment in their in, in fandom. You got the casual people, just Dolphin fans. It don't matter. They root for the team, which all fans should. But at the same token, hey, um, let's see what happens. If they fail, it's okay. We got next year, and every year they feel that way. And nothing's wrong with that as long as those individuals aren't critiquing people and content creators. You know what I mean? Nothing's wrong with that. Then you have people who are truly invested in, man, I want our team to win a Super Bowl. What's holding us back? What moves do we need to make? What do we need to do to actually win one? I want to talk about that all day. I want to get in those conversations of what this team needs to do to actually compete for a Super Bowl. Because the biggest gift as a fan or the biggest thing, the the best thing as a fan is feeling like you're going to win it all, actually winning it all, and reflecting on a journey it took to win it all. And why do I know that? Because I experienced that myself in basketball back in 08, 09, when the Boston Celtics won the um, championship. I was a huge Kevin Garnett fan. And um, when he went to Boston, they had Paul Pierce. I said, this is a good team. But, you know, then they added Ray Allen. And I was like, they're about to win a championship. Posey and all the shooters around. I said, they're about to win a championship. I know this league. I study this league. They're about to win a championship. And I watched every game, all 82 games of the Boston Celtics. Someone said, I thought you were a Ray John Rondo fan. I was a KG fan before Ray John Rondo. That was Ray John Rondo's second year of interest into the league. So, and whoever said you need Bitcoin, TD, I already have Bitcoin, just FYI. Um, but I watched 82 games and I felt every one of them. And I watched every game in the playoffs. Bang! And I watched them win a championship. And it was no, and I'm not even like this. Oh, Boston Celtics, I'm the biggest fan. But just knowing they're going to win, here's why I think they're going to win. Believing they were going to win. 
because of what they built the type of players and how it's all going to jail. I knew they wouldn't be clashing. And I immediately knew they were going to win. I believed it. I watched every game. And the more I watched, I knew they were. And I witnessed them doing it. And it was no greater feeling in my life. But imagine if I'm actually a fan of that team, like the Dolphins. And I'm telling you now, it's hard to believe you're going to win something if you don't believe you are before the season even starts. When you look at the way the team is built and the way it works, that's why I know the moment you hear me say, all trolling aside, all doubt aside, I think we're actually about to win a Super Bowl. I believe that's the day we're going to win it because I'm so critical. I'm so critical of the team. So any moment that I say that we're actually about to win it all out of my fandom, then I truly do believe we're about to win it all. And I'm sorry for the last several years, I knew we weren't going to win a Super Bowl. And when I look at last year and what happened, ladies and gentlemen, I don't care what content creator, what B writer, what analyst, what journalist tells you that this team got better? They are flat out lying. This narrative that we got better is a lie. Straight up lie. Straight up lie. We have not gotten better yet. And I'm holding out hope by saying yet. Curtis said, who said we got better? Are you kidding me? You must be ain't paying attention out here. We actually got better collectively, not by much, but we got a little bit better. We upgraded in some areas, even though we downgraded in some areas. But collectively, technically, you see, they're using all those words. Collectively, technically, we got slightly better. We did get better at cornerback TD. Come on now. We did. Did the Miami Dolphins as a team get better? Stop going to specific position groups. Did the Miami Dolphins as a whole team get better? So when you upgrade at cornerback a little bit, because, and, and that's if we upgrade, let's be honest. Fuller, we brought in a cornerback who actually can cover solidly, but he gave up the most touchdowns just about in the NFL at the cornerback position. I don't care if you can cover well if you're giving up a touchdown every, every other game. That ain't a good look. So even though X was out here getting beat all day, every day, he wouldn't giving up seven every week. But if you want to just, just to not argue, even if we did barely get better at the cornerback position, we didn't get better at the guard position, losing Robert Hunt. Even if we got barely better at the safety position, with the old player now, who everybody's still gloating about, which is crazy. CBS football was playing the Eagles, um, the Eagles versus the Bills game today, and Poyer was getting smoked all game. I don't know why it was on. I was just in my living room and it was on. I'm like, where did this come from? And they playing the speed version of the game where it ain't no huddle, just play after play after play. And I'm like, Poyer out there getting smoked. I ain't gonna lie, I felt bad. I was like, dang, bro, this just randomly had to be on and it had to be Poya getting smoked out here for touchdowns. 
But I also saw in that game why Josh Allen is just ridiculous, man. The plays he was making. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. So even if we got slightly better at safety, we didn't get better at the center position. Even if we got better at the linebacker position, we didn't get better at the defensive tackle position, which is the biggest blow. Like the games we made, the defensive tackle position loss alone is the equivalence. The tackle position alone is the equivalent. We didn't get better than last year. Now, did we make some solid moves to try to fill some holes? Yeah. By collectively still downgrading, but just padding the downgrade. So hypothetically, say our team was a 7.5 out of 10 last year. And when we lost those guys in free agency, we went to a 6.5. Well, the moves we made in free agency brought us up to a 7.1. That's what happened to this team. We went from a 7.5, lost some big name free agents and went to 6.5. And now the acquisitions we made put us at 7.1. That's kind of how I look at it. We made up a little of the loss. But it's still a loss. Still a loss. But we're not even going to get into some of the players that we brought in have injury histories anyway. So here we are, right? We coming into a new season with not as good of a roster as we did last year. Now, when we go in the draft, hopefully we could get two players out of the draft that puts us at least close or hopefully at that 7.5. And we're kind of like the same team as last year. But then we go right back into it with hope. Because, ladies and gentlemen, let me be clear about something. Last year, healthy or not, we were not built to win a Super Bowl. I know we want to think that we are. I will, we want to believe that we were. But we were not built to win the Super Bowl last year. We weren't. Think about where most of the catastrophic injuries were on the defensive side of the ball. It didn't matter. In the first round, we were still weren't going to beat the Chiefs. Mahomes elevates in those moments. He played the Baltimore Ravens' fantastic defense. He played the Buffalo Bills' fantastic defense. And by the way, some of those defenses ended the season higher than ours. It wouldn't have mattered. I tried to tell I try to tell you all and I said this earlier in the stream when it comes to playoff football defense isn't the issue because you can't expect the defense because real playmakers show up big time and make plays in those games it is a matter of whose offense can break through the most we always focus on defense Defense is going to do what they do, but whose offense can break through these great defenses the most? Because majority of the playoff teams have great defenses. That's just to get you there. This isn't the NFL of old, like I said earlier today. This isn't the old school Chicago Bears and Baltimore Ravens historic defenses. Those don't matter in today's NFL with the new rules that, that the offense is favored with. It's all about the offensive side of the ball. Whose quarterback makes the least mistakes and whose quarterbacks thrive and show up in the biggest moment against the greatest competition. That's what it comes down to. 
we can keep ignoring that and trying to make it seem like it's holistically the team. Of course it's holistically the team. But when team A is has the holistic team and team B has the holistic team, both playing at their optimal peak, it comes down to which quarterback cracks first. And we don't want to acknowledge that. And the bigger question to ask is, why do majority of Dolphin fans not want to acknowledge that and run from that? We all know why. Because we have no words, no leg to stand on in that argument. We will lose 100% of the time. Because we don't have a guy that can rise to the occasion in those moments. We're sitting here complaining about why everyone or everything around him wasn't perfect in the moment. Shameful. We got to stop saying, well, the defense did that. The receiver dropped that. The block, running back fumble. All that stuff we want to complain about why everything around the quarterback wasn't perfect instead of asking the quarterback to be perfect in that moment oh gee nobody's perfect i'm sorry miss me with that patrick mahomes plays darn near perfect in these moments no it's not perfect but he's a 95 percenter in these moments man his execution level is 95 percent in these games And yeah, Bill, well, you're comparing it to Patrick Mahomes. He's one of the greatest of all times at this point. I'm sorry. Even though it's not 95% like Mahomes, let's look at these other quarterbacks. These guys, like, look at Purdy. Purdy may not have been the 95%er, but he was a 90%er. But the only reason he didn't get it done is because he couldn't compete with the 95. But not. He is crazy good. Purdy was good and lost because he didn't meet, he didn't match Mahomes or outplay him. I want you to go back to when Mahomes was losing against Tom Brady. Tom Brady was the 95. Let's not sit here and act like Mahomes wouldn't at least 85 and then 90 in it in those games. He was still doing his thing, but Tom Brady was 95 in it. That's how it works. Josh Allen. Josh Allen in his elimination game was every bit of 90. He was bowling. But that pass to Shakur, wide open in the end zone, he got bumped. Okay, he did, but it doesn't matter. You got to make it. Another miss earlier in the game, he had an opportunity. You got to make it. But at least these guys are still operating at a high level. They're just missing a few moments. But that's what it comes down to. Who misses more than the other? But then you go all the way down into a operating at like a 55 in those big games. 60 at best. We'll never compete with those other guys. But instead of recognizing the 60-level performance, we want to talk about Tyreek dropped the big one, No, The defense gave them points. Now, do we ignore the fact that Tyreek dropped the big ball? No, we don't ignore that. Shame on Tyreek, but he does so much on the offense. Does he not have room for error? Everybody has room for error. Everybody's going to miss something. But you can't tell me in some of these big games that Tyreek ain't punching in an 80 or an 85, the 15% that he missing and maybe that one drop, that one fumble but your quarterback got to be punching an 85-92. You he can't be at a 60. And then we're trying to complain about everybody else and what didn't happen around him.
And why do I even bring all of this up? I bring it all up, ladies and gentlemen, because how do we win a Super Bowl like this? How do we win a Super Bowl like this? You cannot tell me Tua has been any better than Andy Dalton's career in Cincinnati. You, you, you know what I'm saying? Andy Dalton was never an issue, but he was always good enough not to be good enough. He was a great passer. He had some weapons. He always made it to the first round, and they got bounced. And it took them 10, 11 years to realize he good, but we got to move on. We done figured everything we can around him. It just ain't working. And this is why I used to tell you all, the worst quarterback you can ever have in the NFL is the guy who's good enough not to be good enough. He ain't no scrub. He ain't trash, but he certainly ain't a baller. He just can throw the ball. And connect. But nothing more, nothing less. It's the worst quarterback you can ever have. The worst. I'd rather have Pat White than have that. So I can know after one year, let me find the next guy right away. The worst thing you can do is get stuck with a guy seven plus years and realize we got to move on. Then what were we doing for the last seven years? <laughs> The worst. I keep telling y'all, it's the worst. And how do you win a super? Like, like these guys can actually win a Super Bowl. I always tell y'all, Tua can win a Super Bowl. Tua can win a Super Bowl. But that window is closed because you need to be able to afford a historic defense and some other historic element. And when you lose guys like Christian Wilkins and stuff like that, what's the odds of having a historic defense? And your window is closed now because you're going to have less around them. People always bring up Flacco. Flacco won one. Flacco also rose to the occasion and played like a top five quarterback that year. Go check it out. Real talk. Go look at the stats and everything. He played like a top five. Not saying to a can't, right? But they also had a historic defense that didn't allow many points per game. And they also had a real good compliment around him with the run game and everything. And in the biggest moments, he didn't hurt his team. But truth be told, Flacco always kind of had that in him. He had other intangibles as well. He had a cannon of an arm. He had a certain level of accuracy. Let's be honest, Flacco was never a scrub because, remember, it's hard to win the Super Bowl anyway. But Flacco's thing was his mobility. And some would say processing the field without time to throw the ball. So what did they do? They went and got him an old line that'll give him time. They catered to him perfectly, right? And then you have to go look at how much money was Flacco making at the time. It wasn't that much. And I always I told y'all two years ago, we could win a Super Bowl with Tua, but you need to recreate Alabama. And I I was shocked because we came close to recreating it. Tyreek, Waddle, run game. I mean, I was like, dang, they doing something I ain't believe they could do. They coming close, but you still ain't got that five-star O-line. And now the time has come to an end to try to even buy your way to recreate it. Because remember, 
we bought our way to this point now. Ain't no buy, ain't no more buying our way, ladies and gentlemen. There ain't no more buying our way. There ain't no more buying our way. Now every year we got to ask which purchase we need to pawn. That's where we are as a team now. Which purchase do we need to pawn? Because a bill do, and I ain't got no money. This year, we didn't pawn anyone. We just straight out lost with no profit. Next year, we going to start pawning, ladies and gentlemen. Well, we pawned Xavier Howard and Jerome Baker and Emmanuel Ogbaugh. But next year, we pawning some pieces that y'all ain't thinking about right now. So, yeah, that's where we are. Shout out to the homie G firm who said Joe Milton third round. We'll talk about it. The issue I have with your disposition is when it comes to team improvements, you zoom in on two a solely. We, um, had we finished healthy, we would have won our division and a playoff game. You're the problem I have with your disposition. You're straight up making an assumption. Just like you yourself last year, G Firm said, if Tua didn't get hurt last year, we would have won a division and won a playoff game. This was your assertion two years ago, making an assumption. So this year, karma came around because they we got put in the same situation and he was healthy this time and he lost just like Scott or them did the year before. He lost just like Skyler them did. Y'all remember two years ago? If Tua didn't get hurt, we would have won those games. We would have might have won a division and won our first playoff game. This year, he was put in the same position, and he didn't get hurt, and we lost all them games. So these assumptions got to stop. And this is an assumption. Finish healthy, we would have won our division and the playoff game. Why do you think that when evidence showed when we were healthy versus Buffalo early in the season, we couldn't beat a competitive team? When we were healthy versus the Eagles, we couldn't beat a competitive team. When we were healthy versus the Chiefs in Germany, we couldn't beat a competitive team. So later in the season, all of a sudden, our version of health is supposed to start beating healthy teams? Sorry, your logic doesn't hold up. The logic not holding up. You can't have your cake and eat it too. Data and proof shows us you can't make that assumption that if we were healthy, we would have won our division in a playoff game. We got to stop doing that as a fan base, too, to make our point. We have to. Because we got to stop making our assumptions benefit our logic. Every assumption I make is backed by precedent. It would have been a better assumption to say, we would have still lost because we were losing when we were healthy against the good teams because at least I got that evidence to prove it. But just randomly saying we would have won more games, there's no evidence to, to suggest that. None whatsoever. So I'm just saying, no, nah, that one can't fly. So I understand your issue with my disposition, but the uh, the counter disposition doesn't have any weight to it. It doesn't have any backing, any evidence whatsoever. And by the way, when it comes to team improvements, you say I zoom in on Tua solely. <laughs> it has to be Tua. And let me explain why. 
How, how are we supposed to improve when all the decisions made now are preparing for his impending contract? The decisions we're making now are preparing for his impending contract. Why didn't we re-sign Christian Wilkins? Because long-term, we wouldn't be able to afford Christian Wilkins because of the impending Tua contract. If Tua had four more years of making five, $8 million, Christian Wilkins might be on his roster right now. Sign, lockdown, sealed and delivered. Robert Hunt might even still be here. Van Ginkle might still be here. If the next four years we locked in to her for $8 million a year, all the guys would still be here. Unless they decided not to just from another, just because they felt they didn't want the player, but that's not, doesn't make sense. Some of the best players at their position. So is it that Tua doesn't have what it takes or Tua is a prisoner of circumstance? Tua, both. Um, first of all, we know Tua don't have what it takes. Because in those big moments, in them big games, give me the quarterback that balls out and still loses. I can, st I can live with that all day. Then you point to other places and be like, man, he doing all he can. He giving it to us, man. We need to figure this formula out around him. But when you're contributing in the loss and playing poorly or average at best, yeah, he, yeah, he don't got what it takes. But when it comes to Tua being a prisoner of the circumstance, we might be thinking about this differently, but Tua has always been a prisoner of the circumstance because I continue to tell y'all Tua is, Tua is a victim of them wanting to win instead of developing him early on. Y'all have truly lost your mind. I'm telling you, and I ain't saying this in an insultive way. Think about it. Just think about it. Think about it. Think about it. McDaniel ain't developing to him. He's not developing to him. He's taking what he does well and saying, I'm going to put it on full display. Screw the things you don't do well. I'm not even going to put you in them positions. That's smart coaching, but it's it also isn't developing. He's not developing the man. And that ain't to his fault. I can't telling y'all Tua is a victim in that sense. He ain't, they didn't set him up for success since day one. Flores wanted to win right away. Screw all of that. Put him in this system and tell him to do good. I ain't got time for all that extra development stuff. McDaniel come in. Y'all think that he made Tua better? No. Imagine Flores having an uh, uh, opened up uh, uh, RPO offense, asking him to do everything. He don't do everything well. He only do like 60% of it well, and he looks like a 60%er guy. Not developing him in the other 40%. And then McDaniel come in and say, screw that. We're going to take the 60% and make that 60, 100% and avoid the other 40. That still ain't development. They did Tua wrong since day one. I told y'all, if they bring Tua in, put him in a pro-style system, allow him to fail for the first two years, year three, I think he has the intangibles to take off. But I'm not talking about the Mike McDaniel takeoff, which is hide the flaws and just amplify the strengths. No, two years of struggle would have gave him much more limited weaknesses. He would have been an 80 percenter because the other 20 he'll never do. He'll never be able to stretch the field. He'll throw it outside the numbers. He, he might actually be better at throwing outside the numbers today if they would have done that. He wouldn't have been elite because arm strength still comes into play outside, but you would have been able to live with that because he would have been elevated in everything else. And year three would have been the coming out party and it would have been the most beautiful thing. But when Flores did what he did, I say, oh, he in trouble. And then I said, he ain't going to make it to year four. 
but he made it to year four because they got a coach who's smart and knows how to play the numbers. But it's not long-term sustainable. It's not long-term sustainable. Because as a coach, you can strategically finagle things. You want to know how I know? I was in corporate America and I was in, I was in management, right? Before I got promoted to manage, manager, I was a supervisor. So I was in charge of, I was an orientation supervisor though. So we would hire, we would train 20 um, um, insurance agents at a time. Sales, by the way, insurance sales agents, right? We would train them. We would take them through on the on the phones, talking to customers. And for two years straight, every class was failing before I started. Every class, you know, they, there was a rating system, one through five, it was zero to five. And every class, like the first six months, had an average of like 2.2. When just to graduate onto the floor, to be graduated out of the system, you got to be like a 3.5. Every class was fair. And I remember whenever I took over and I said, let me handle it. I'll take care of it. My first month, we were rated a 4.2. Second month, 3.96. Third month, 4.1. Why? Because I was, I'm was i just like Mike McDaniel. I wasn't dumb. I'm not going to go in there trying to teach you the whole job at once and then sit there and watch me get a two and eventually get better, but it still ain't moving the needle to where they're impressed. So what did I do? Oh, sales is worth 60% of the grade. So that's the number one focus. Screw all that other stuff. We were the best selling group that there was. And being nice to the customer was 20%. Oh, that's a given. But all that quality stuff, all the, oh, you made this error in that area. Don't worry about that. But we were rocking that 80% like no other. They were like, how are you rated so high? Yeah, we'll get better on the back end with quality. He strategically was smart and knew how to get the most production early, even though I'm not making the most well-rounded agent. But I'm buying myself time to hopefully develop that in them, the quality piece with experience. But with McDaniel, he ain't developing none of it because he's still running out here doing the same thing over and over. He not doing that gradual quality piece on the back end. He's not. Man, you're one of the highest rating. And I ain't gonna lie, it got me promoted to manager. I'll take it. It got me to the next level. Lucky for me, before they saw, yeah, but they quality be struggling early. That's how it works. That's what McDaniel came in and did. And I don't knock him for it. It's genius. But you gotta recognize what it is for what it is. Who has been screwed by the Miami Dolphins? Straight screwed by the Dolphins. And trust me, by the way, I was working on quality over time, so they all got straight. Just FYI, I had I, I, I still took care of my people and developed them. Okay, but we were bleeding so bad that I had to go big punch first. Just like me, Daniel came in with Tua, but the difference is I'm noticing that he's not focusing on those weaknesses. You like, let's be honest, y'all. You got to tell me what quarterbacks in the NFL ain't throwing outside the numbers 20% of the game. Two outside the number throws got to be 3% of a game. Three to 5%. And I ain't talking about the occasional outside the numbers go route right on the outside of the numbers. I'm talking about the sideline action. Do you know how common that is in the NFL for quarterbacks like with the side sideline action on the outside? But be honest with yourself. How often do you see us executing that? Because it's one of his weaknesses and McDaniel stays away from it as much as he can. And if he does, it's in the flat, something real quick. And he struggled with that too. These are all facts. It ain't my it ain't your my feelings, your feelings. It ain't me trying to sell y'all on why two ain't it. These are all facts. Tua, but to, to give Tua some 
not an excuse, but he's been screwed by the Miami Dolphins. Straight screwed. It's the truth. Remember last year, you got on tour for losing every game without Armstead. This year, we won his majority games without him. Against the bums once again. I mean, I want you to think about it, G-Firm. Even last year, who did we lose to last year? I want y'all to think about that. Who did we lose to, not this year we just had, but the year before? Even though Armstead wasn't on the field, but look at the competition we were losing to. Think about it. San Francisco, one of the best teams in the league. Chargers, they were competitive at the time. We shouldn't have lost, but we lost. Because, And to be honest with you, the reason why we lost that game, Herbert just sliced and diced and Tua didn't. Let's go back. I ain't talking about this year. The year before, Herbert was slicing and dicing and Tua didn't. Tua didn't. Then you got the Buffalo game. He didn't play too bad. He actually played above average in that game. But it still went on Josh Allen's level. Lost. Green Bay game, self-explanatory. Self-explanatory. So then you don't have – um, this year you say we won without Armstead, but again, low-level competition. Like, I keep asking you, G-Firm, can you tell me one team that we beat this year that was really a threat outside of the Cowboys and he didn't have a great game in that game? But outside of the Cowboys, can you give me one of those wins that the team was legitimately scary? Or a playoff type team? Can you? Forget the fact they didn't make it, but you looked at them as a playoff team. We didn't even look at none of them teams as playoff teams that we beat. We didn't even look at them. Screw the fact they didn't make it to prove the point, but just the team in general. Like, none of them we can say they were good even though they didn't make it. None of them. So, yeah, man, um, that Armstead element, I'm glad he started winning games without Armstead, but at the same token, you know what you, listen, let's be clear about something, y'all. You could win all the bum games you want. You're only going to be judged off of the competitive ones. Mahomes in the regular season this year, he only beat the bum teams. He didn't beat none of the good teams in the regular season, other than the Dolphins. <laughs> right? But when he got his opportunity in the playoffs, see, here's the thing. All of these narratives can go away when you got an opportunity to debunk them. Mahomes was good against the bums and trash against the good teams this year. And we were like, Mahomes falling off. Don't act like we all wouldn't say Mahomes falling off. Mahomes ain't as good anymore. Oh, he got less around him. It's starting to show. Let's be honest. We all said it. But when we went into week one of the playoffs, no matter what quarterback did, good or bad, we all said they could either redeem themselves or hurt themselves in these playoffs. Mahomes, you win playoff games, none of the regular season mattered. Tua, you win the playoff game against the Chiefs, none of that matters. Did, tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong in the chat. Did, we, did nobody say if, if Tua can ball out and win this game versus the Chiefs, None of that regular season crap matters. We all said it. We everybody, the haters, the lovers, everybody, if he could beat Mahomes, he could get rid of that whole narrative. Because I remember going back and forth with Omar Kelly on Twitter. 
Because I kind of like pushed back, even though I felt that way inside too. I pushed back. I said, so he lose seven games against good teams in one win. It just erases it all. Because technically, he would have still needed more to prove. But that would have been a huge start for him. So who showed up and who didn't? Mahomes showed up, did his thing, and said, y'all forget about all that regular season crap. I'm Mahomes. Tua had an opportunity to say, y'all forget about that regular season crap. I'm Tua. And he didn't. All Tua has in his four-year career is a whole bunch of he didn'ts. Here's your opportunity. He didn't. All right, a new opportunity. He didn't. All right, this one right here, and we can remove that. He didn't. All the way to the point to where we can say he never And here we are ready to load up another year and give him that blind hope and say, all right, all right, if he do it now, then... yeah, we're going to keep saying that. The sad part is the people who line up in week three, oh, this is a good team. If he can beat them, then we dispel the narrative. Man, I told y'all earlier last season, none of these games, man, win these games, try to win the game, win some, lose some, glad you won more than you lost, but it's always going to come down to the end. It's always going to come down to the end, y'all. Shout out to the homie Kevin Lee just became a new member. I think you've been a member before. You probably just re up on it. Salute to you, homie. Thank you for the dedicated support to TD Fans Talk channel. If you want to become a member, the link is in the um, chat. If you want to drop a donation, show some love and support, appreciate it as well, especially for the offseason. And salute to everybody who shows love by hitting that like button. Push it right now if you can. Punch that like button, all right? Shout out to the Excuse me, the homie Rob said, just dropping in to show some love, TD. Hopefully, we uh, make a deep run and all the pieces fall in place this season. Although, I wouldn't be surprised if it all goes south. Again, fins up. I'm here for life, good and bad. Salute to you. That's what a real fan does, bro. Even if we talk about the good and bad, real fans still going to be here like me. All these people, go find another team. No. I love my team. I love them so much that I could be critical of them. Do you love them that much? Mm. Do you love them that much? Ain't nothing wrong with wanting to have a good relationship so you're both happy. Don't let, don't let, don't let your, your, your significant other just run all over you. Speak up for yourself. You can still love them and work with them through the process. All right? G firm said we beat no good teams. I can see that. Okay. Salute to you. My issue is you put all the lo losses at his feet. Do you remember how poorly Tyreek played in the KC game? Here we go again. I don't know how many times and ways I got to say it, G firm. First of all, I don't put all the losses solely at Tua's feet, but show me the loss that. He didn't also contribute to. It's not all at his feet. But you cannot contribute to the loss. And ladies and gentlemen, newsflash, playing average is contributing to the loss for a number five overall pick who wants a big contract, who's trying to be the franchise quarterback. Playing slightly above average in a loss is contributing to the loss. We need good quarterback play at a minimum. You can't lose and say, well, he was above average. No. No. No, no, no. If, you, if you're average or above average and you win, okay. You didn't do enough to, to help your team lose. But we need you at a minimum to play good in your losses. So tell me once again, what loss did he play good, really good, great, or elite?
What loss did he play good, really good, great, or elite? I don't want to hear no, uh, he was above average in that one, or he was average. No, that ain't what we pay you for. That ain't what we did with a franchise quarterback is. But here's what people need to understand. You're going to have some average games and lose. You're going to have some above average games and lose. But stop running away from the fact that you contributed to it. The problem with Tua is they pile up just enough for it to be an issue. So if you got seven games you lose in a season because you were average above average at best in all seven of them, I can live with four. It happens. I can live with four. The other three, winning one or two of those or playing better, we would have actually won one or two of those. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. And again, you might have seven that you play below average. Hey, you look at Patrick Mahomes, bro. Patrick Mahomes was, I ain't going to say trash, but there were games they lost. He was above average. Patrick Mahomes, I'm sorry. You look, that's why we all said, oh, it's over for Mahomes. Oh, they ain't the same. He ain't the same. That's why we were talking trash about Mahomes all season. Most analysts were saying, yeah, Mahomes, fall. it ain't the same. You know, he made it happen last year, but this year is starting to catch up. They lost both their tackles. It's starting to show. You can have those moments, but when you're given an opportunity to redeem yourself, how do you respond? Mahomes responded, full straight, Super Bowl. Drop Mike. Full straight, Super Bowl. <laughs> That's how it works, ladies and gentlemen. All right, Kevin Lee said Tua needs to just play on his fifth-year option, and Miami needs to move on, period. Tua, um, Tua can't finish games, TD. Look at Tennessee game. KC, Germany game, and Buffalo week 18 game where he chokes last drive. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to say Miami needs to move on, period. I'm with you on two and needs to just play his fifth-year option. And then it's his last final opportunity to prove himself. Moving on, period, means that you don't want him to prove it on the fifth year. If he can do it in the fifth year and he shows that stuff, let's roll. It is what it is. But if he can't, then we move on. But I don't want to say make him play his fifth year and then let's move on automatic. He might show us something in his fifth year that we didn't see coming. Big possibility. Big possibility. Shout out to everybody dropping the super chats, man. I appreciate you guys. Thank you all again for the love and support. Always appreciate it. Uh, fans up no matter what, but real quick before we move forward, y'all do me one solid, do me a huge favor. Y'all punch that like button real quick, okay? Let's just take about 30 seconds and let's get the likes up because the algorithm lets other people know that we're live because we literally got six on Twitter and 300 on YouTube and one on Twitch. The one person on Twitch. <laughs> Oh, man. So y'all punch that like button for you, boy. All right? Appreciate y'all once again. Okay? All right. Let's move forward. Tua outplays in that game. Chief Firm, I love you, brother. I love you, brother. What game are you talking about? Wild card playoff game? Please put it in the chat, bro. I don't want to keep handing you L's, bro. What game are you talking about? 
Are you talking about the Wildcat? I mean, wild card playoff game. Are you going to sit here and tell me that Tua played better than Mahomes in that game? Please, bro. Just just put it in the chat real quick. Just yes or no so so I can move on. Um, Because I want to make sure that we're not tripping here. Please. I'm going to give you like 10 more seconds, bro. Hopefully you answer the question. Um, um, <laughs> um, I, don't, I don't know what you're talking about, bro. I'm trying to work with you here, but I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, I don't know. Maybe you're disappearing on me now. Are you disappearing on me, bro? Maybe you're Let me know in the chat. All right. Let's move on. I guess I'll get your answer at some point. I guess I'll, I'm assuming I'll get your answer at some point. All right. I'll get it at some point. All right. Oh, you said the Germany game. Really, bro. Really, bro. All right. Let me pull up the Germany game. I'm going to tell you now you're wrong. I've studied it through and through. Everything. Let me pull up the Germany game. Okay. The Germany game. Pull up the stats. <laughs> Oh, oh my gosh okay all right all right i'm pulling it up now all right here it is i got that game up let me go to the stats oh my god all right here we go i got the stats up with both quarterbacks all right mahomes had a better completion percentage Tua had eight more yards than mahomes because he threw the ball more than mahomes Mahomes had a better average yards per throw. Mahomes had two touchdowns, zero interceptions. Mahomes, well, Tua had one touchdown, zero interceptions. Mahomes was sacked twice for 11 yards. Tua was sacked three times for 18 yards. Tua's QBR was 45. Mahomes was 49. Mahomes had a higher QBR. Tua's rating was an 87. Mahomes' rating was a 106. Mahomes had more rushing yards. Mahomes had more rushing yards per attempt. Tua fumbled once. Mahomes fumbled once. They both fumbled once. He didn't have a better game than Mahomes. Mahomes got in that end zone and put two touchdowns in. Two touchdowns in. Tua one. Mahomes better completion percentage. Yards per throw. Higher rating. What are you talking about? What are you even talking about? Doesn't make any sense. Give me a second. I'm looking for it. Do you know? Let me pull this up. 
that game was even worse than I thought since you're bringing it up. When Patrick Mahomes fumbled, it put them on our, our their own 27-yard line. We scored 14 points, and we were already in field goal range. And Raheem Mostert ran in the touchdown for 13 yards. Raheem Mostert ran in the touchdown for 13 yards. Tua put up seven points in this game. Mahomes put up two touchdowns in this game. Did G Firm even respond yet? Maybe he's going to check the stats himself because he don't even believe the words I'm saying right now. He don't even believe the words I'm saying right now from, uh, from the stats. He probably checking right now. No, that can't be. No, these are the numbers. Let me put it up so you all can see. Share screen. Chiefs Dolphins, 21-14. Here it is on the screen. Let me do solo view. Patrick Mahomes, higher completion percentage. Tua had not eight more yards than him. And it's probably was at the end of the game trying to come back. Uh, I mean, I did check my phone, G-Firm. I'm not getting anything from you. I'm not getting anything. He said, we shut Mahomes out in the second half. You shut them out in the second half. Okay. Your point? He still had a better game overall than Tua. And on top of it, when you have the lead 21 to zip, and you and you shut a team out and you still couldn't do it. And I'm not getting this notion you forced the fumble on him. Okay, they forced two of the fumble early in the game. All I'm saying to you is, bro, this notion that Tua played a better game, he didn't. He didn't. He didn't at all. And they shut Tua out for three quarters. Look at it. Zero, zero, and zero in the fourth. Mahomes put up all his numbers in the first half. I'm not arguing with you about that. All I'm saying to you is collectively four quarters, Mahomes played better. And let's get something straight. You think you were going to see the problem is you think we would have shut Mahomes down had they been down 24 to 21. (laughs) See, that's where you're mistaken. You think all of a sudden we were going to shut him down if they were down 24 to 21. We we saw Andy Reid and them playing conservative. We saw Andy Reid out there uh, being conservative, trying to just not let us come back. We watched it. Either way, man, we don't really have to argue this one, bro. At the end of the day, he did not have a better game. He did not outplay Patrick Mahomes in this game. He didn't. That's the reality. And the truth of the matter is, if you really want to get into the details of it, Tua, in the biggest moment of this game, on 4th and 10, fumbled the football. 
he fumbled the football. No, let's go a step further. First and 10, incomplete. Second and 10, incomplete. Third and 10, incomplete. Fourth and 10, fumble, game over. Turnover on down. This is the clutch moment right after Raheem Moster ran the ball for 25 yards. Right after Raheem Moster, like, like, like y'all don't understand on that last drive, Raheem Moster, the first play of the drive at the Miami 25, Raheem Moster ran the ball for 25 yards to put us at midfield. Second down on that, the second play, first and 10 from the 50 on that drive, Raheem Moster ran the ball 19 yards to put us at the 31. What followed? Incomplete, 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 fumble. Tua, 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 Tua. <laughs> tua, 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 Tua. And I don't want to hear no second and 10. Cedric Wilson ran the wrong route. He was wide open going to the end zone. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. That should have been a touchdown. Man was wide open, headed towards the end zone. Because what a lot of people don't recognize on that, on that drive, too, if it was a comeback, you would have probably been picked because the corner was staying right there, and he blew right past him. Sorry, bro. Sorry. And then we want to talk about Mahomes, right? The the drive before that, Mahomes, first and 10, seven-yard pass to Travis Kelsey. Second and 10, run by Pacheco for two yards. Third and 10, run, no gain. Turnover on downs. That ain't no Mahomes. He got his seven-yard completion. They thought in two plays they could run it for three yards. They didn't get it. Good job, defense. Punk the ball. Oh, but that's Mahomes. He can shut out. No. No. Let's go to the Dolphins' second to last drive. Let's see what ended up happening. Let's see what ended up happening. At the end of the drive, first and 10, negative six yard run by Ahmed. Second and 16, we're in trouble. Clutch moments to a sack for 11 yards. Third and 27, incomplete to Jalen Waddle. That's how that drive ended. Let's go to the Chiefs, the drive before that. All right. Um, first and 10, incomplete to Pacheco. Second and 10, one yard run. Third and nine, incomplete to Valdez Scantling. Christian Wilkins um, in coverage. I don't know why. Kohu and Christian Wilkins was in coverage. Interesting. They off the field. Mahomes couldn't get it done on that drive. In the drive before that, we scored a touchdown off of their fumble. Lucky for us, Raheem Moster ran in a 13-yard touchdown. Anyway, let me digress. I'll get off of that whole subject. He didn't play better than Tua. I mean, Tua didn't play better than him. Excuse me. Tua did not play better than no freaking Patrick Mahomes. Tua was pedestrian. Luckily, he didn't turn the ball over. Thank you for that. He was pedestrian. Average at best in that game. Average. Straight, fleshly average. And did Mahomes have a phenomenal game? No. He was great in the first half. And average in the second half, all together, he had a good game. Not a really good game. He had a good game. It's that simple. Um, all right, let's move on. Sorry. He sent the super chat, so we don't want to ignore the chat. So we want to hit him. CB83. Um, said QBs had bad games. I agree. Brady had a lot of them. I agree. 
but he had a better system. Stop. He didn't have no. Oh, I'm glad you said this. He had a better system and team that made up for it. It's complimentary football. Teams win chips. You can't sit here and tell me Brady had a better team. You can't sit me sit here and tell, tell me hands down Brady had just this better team. No, no, sir. We had plenty of talent on this roster. That ain't what it came down to. But the thing that gets me most importantly that I want to address tonight with y'all, that comment right there, but he had a better system. Brady ain't had no better system. Let me tell y'all something. It's time for y'all to stop getting on Mike McDaniel. So you trying to tell me Brady had a better system than what two is running right now? Because truth be told, what y'all want to run away from and not talk about is the fact that Mike McDaniel probably got the best system in the NFL. The problem is he can't show the whole system because the quarterback can't operate the whole system. Better system. That is starting to get to me. So just like when Clap made his mock draft, right? Let me educate y'all on something. When Clapp made his mock draft and said, Mike McDaniel need a quarterback who can operate his system. What do you mean? That's so stupid. Two is the best in the system. How the heck do you know two are the best in the system when two is the only person ever been in it? This ain't the, 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 the San Francisco 100% system. This is the Tua version of it, which is perfect for Tua. Because it's customized for Tua. Don't think for a second McDaniel don't have more in this system, but he don't do it because Tua can't do it. Do not think for a second McDaniel don't have things in this system that kills the outside of the numbers, but he don't run them because it ain't Tua's strength. So when Clark says he needs somebody who can run his system, he's saying he needs somebody who can run it fully because Penix can throw outside the numbers. Penix has better deep ball accuracy. Straight facts. Brady had a better system. Tell me what Brady's limitations are in any system. Other than a RPO for mobility. But tell me what throws Brady couldn't make. Tell me. So this notion, I can't believe you literally said, I can't believe you literally said Brady had a better system. That triggers me. Why? Because everybody keeps talking about this system and saying Mike McDaniel needs to be better when they're discounting the fact that Mike McDaniel could be doing so much more, but he doesn't want to. Why do you think he said I came in and saw them 700 plays and we're going to focus on those? There were 2,000 plays. But he identified the 700 that, that showed his strength. So those other ones don't? Oh, so we'll eliminate that from the playbook and what I know we could do. That's all it is. Brady had a better system. I can't believe you even said that. I can't believe you even said that. And stop arguing with me about Penix's arm. Yes, he got the same arm as um as Tua. But Michael Penix Jr. is more accurate with the deep ball. Why? Because maybe he knows how to fire the deep ball a half a second sooner than Tua so it could still be in stride. Tua got better in that this year, by the way. Yeah, it was a few more in stride, but it was still some underthrows. And another thing, stop this narrative about 
Why do people complain about these in stride throws when they're touchdowns anyway? Why are they complaining about touchdowns? Stop lying. Do you know how many underthrown deep balls that's been caught that wasn't a touchdown? It may have been first and goal or whatever it may have been, but there are plenty in the last two years. Tua got probably over 20 balls that were underthrown that end up first and 10. That should have been touchdowns. Yes, some of them end up being touchdowns because they so wide open, but there are a lot of them that end up first and 10 at the 17, first and 10 at the 7, first and 10 at the 22. That should have been touchdowns. Michael Penix and Tua both have a similar arm strength. I personally believe Penix has slightly a bit a little bit better arm strength. It's 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 only noticeable outside the numbers. But Michael Penix Jr., his anticipation, in my opinion, connects on those deep balls in the window in stride better than Tua. Better than Tua on the deep ball. Intermediate, short, they they are they're identical twins. They are identical twins. Because Tua even got better with ball placement, throwing guys on the short and intermediate in stride somewhat. He definitely got better than two years ago because he was, ugh. But last year, he got a lot better in, in with the in stride, with the short and intermediate. But Michael Penix, same thing. Same thing. But I'm sorry. I just got to dispel some of these rumors, man. (laughs) G-Firm said Brady wasn't the lead in his first three Super Bowls. Was he average? Was he above average? Or was he good? Really good. Great. See, what you can't tell me in his first few Super Bowls is that he was average. What you can't tell me in his first few Super Bowls is that he was above average. You can't tell me that. At a bare minimum, he was good. Bare minimum. So that's all I'm saying. I did G-Firm. That's all I'm saying. That's it. Man, we've been going and I and I had so I got so much stuff I, I want to cover that I might have to cover tomorrow because I'm three streams in today. And my baby girl ain't feeling her best. So I, I want to try to help the wife. But I'll say this in closing, and we'll pick up where we left off yesterday. How many teams are better than the Miami Dolphins right now? I'm not even going to talk about the NFL. I'm going to go to the AFC. Truly, 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 I feel like seven teams are better than the Dolphins right now in the AFC. Chiefs, Baltimore, Buffalo barely, and we'll be better than them, hopefully, if we get the right pieces in the draft. But right now, Buffalo, Texans, Bengals, Browns. Hate me all you want, the Jets. Those out of seven teams is better than us right now. Pittsburgh. I'm not going to put them ahead of us right now. They get another receiver. I still may not, but they'll be doggone close. The Jags, I don't put them above us. We right there in that realm. Colts, not at all. Heck no. Heck no. Heck no. But I'm telling you, these teams are way better prepared than we are. Chargers, no. Not until they make their turnaround. That's just how I feel right now. And hopefully we have a great draft to where we can change that. But that's where I believe we are. Thank you all so much. I know I was supposed to bring in guests and all that tonight. I ain't know we got an hour and 40 minutes in. I need to help the wife out um, because I took 30 minutes trying to fix this system issue. Um, So 
it kind of knocked out a lot of my time. Um, plus, when I got it working, it took like another seven minutes at the beginning of this stream. So sorry about that. But um, tomorrow, hopefully, we can do that. Um, tomorrow night, we do got the AFC East Roundtable, Miami Dolphins Roundtable. Me, Doug, CB83, doing what we do, going at it. That should be really fun. CB rocking in the chat right now, so he's probably going to bring a lot of these things to talk about. So y'all make sure y'all come through tomorrow. All right. Love y'all. Um, appreciate y'all. Hit the like button on your way out of the building. Titans are not better than us, but love y'all. I will see y'all tomorrow. It bless you. God bless you all. I appreciate the love, support. Everybody says super chats. Everybody who hit the like button. So grateful. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Fans up no matter what, because we all want to win a Super Bowl. Y'all stay blessed. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Peace. I'm out.